and welcome to the, uh, I guess, third ramble log. I don't know. I'm, it's, 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 we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I don't know what, what even order I'm going to put these up. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about Brooklyn Nine Nine uh, coming to an end and why I think that might very well be a good thing. So, a few of you probably immediately like, do you not like the show? What's the problem? Yeah, I'm sad about this not being part of my life anymore. What's what's going on? And and I. I feel your pain. I, I love this show. I think it's a really fun show. I think the characters are good. I think um, it's it's remained funny throughout. The storylines are often surprisingly fresh, considering how many seasons it's in now. Um, I love the cast. Everything about the show pretty much works for me. But there is an element of it that I think is going to be interesting. And for those who don't know, um, they actually were already in the middle of writing this next season. I think it's eight. Um, they would written, like, I think, five episodes, they said, or six episodes, something like that. Um, when um, uh, sort of uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, these cases came to the for- public forefront, and um, the protests started happening, and Black Lives Matter sort of got a, got a, got another wind, yet another wind that has sadly uh, fallen by the wayside again, as as the as the white populace have kind of forgotten about it. <laughs> it's uh, I, that is a luxury, isn't it? <laughs> that's that's privilege right there. Just being able to go, you know what? I did a bit. <laughs> we can stop now, right? <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, society is is rude. Uh, we're all the worst. Um, but my point stands, which is that like they got to that point and went, how can we make this show about police anymore, and not, you know, and 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 not address this? But there is a in there is a a problem built into that. Um, the structure of a st- of any police show any police show is the police are the protagonists the and they go and get the bad guys because that's the structure of any show any narrative thing has a protagonist and an antagonist right your protagonist is generally speaking aligned with good generally speaking not uh, you know excluding anti-heroes and some stories that are focused on the villains but you know in general you know you have a hero a person to root for who's who's going against an uh, an antagonist, a force that wants them not to achieve what they're trying to achieve, or a force that wants to achieve something terrible that the protagonist is trying to stop them from achieving. So that's just storytelling. And the problem is when you set it in in the world of police, that seems very easy on the surface. You go, well, there's good guys and bad guys, right? But we now know... And we're learning that that's not that simple. <laughs> um, and we've, it's, we've known it for a long time, but TV is not caught up. Um, I think the first signs of TV catching up to that idea is things like The Wire, where we had, we were seeing equal time between the police and the, uh, the, the, the people dealing drugs because we were sort of, the show was almost saying, hey, these people aren't that dissimilar. You know, they they've just taken different paths in their lives, and it's because of it, it's because of socioeconomic reasons, um, systemic racism, and all these other things. All these are the contributing factors that have sort of led to this this imbalance. And and the wire weirdly kind of was ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Looking at as it, as it expanded, it showed us things, other things that were contributing factors it talked about the press it talked about the education system and and the, and the politics and it just it sort of expanded from this cop show uh, into this wider commentary on how society has sort of pushed people into these situations and i think that's a, that's incredible especially for the time it came out but you look at like other shows that are on the air at the moment um you know uh, you know uh, blue bloods the rookie um, even like castle which ended a couple of years back like you know these shows were whether good or bad i'm not criticizing the criti- critiquing the shows at all here in themselves i'm simply pointing out that they have to to function as stories the heroes of the police and the villains of the other 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 people that they're they're chasing who are committing crimes who are inherently evil as, as the shows may present them and because we know it's not that black and white anymore the shows become problematic they are still entertaining on that basic level or can be entertaining on that basic level but it's it's a message that i'm not sure we want to be sending anymore you know um to i I don't want to use the word uneducated but there are people out there who don't realize the, the depth of the problems that lie within the police there are people who remain ignorant and that might be out of stubbornness it might be out of just not being that 
connected to what's happening you know um older people for example who aren't looking at twitter and seeing all of the abuses and the things that are being filmed what they're watching is their tv and they're seeing shows like blue bloods and seeing you know that the police they're here to protect me you know and that's a message that's kind of dangerous to present these days when we need people to agree that systemic change is necessary um and i don't want this this these ramble log things to get too political in general but this one is is highly connected to politics so you'll have to forgive me um but i think it's important that if if huge systemic change is going to happen people understand why and shows that present um, a more positive view of the police just by the nature of storytelling uh, are kind of problematic now uh, not through much fault of their own well some of them for sure um, I actually want to point people at this point to a, to a series by a, a YouTuber called Skip Intro um, and I want to actually give a little shout out to Latty uh, one of our one of our uh, I think patrons I'm sure yeah, one of our patrons, Latte, um, who's been a long-time listener anyway, um, prior to becoming a patron, and uh, who pointed me at this series, and it's uh, it's on Copaganda. So if you type the word Copaganda into YouTube, Skip Intro's uh, playlist, I think, is one of the first things that comes up. And it's basically a series of videos looking at uh, police uh, depictions in media, and it's really fascinating, and it actually talks about a lot of the stuff I've just sort of like skimmed over there, but in specific ways. I've not watched all of it yet. I've not watched the last two um, because the, the, the I just haven't got a chance to yet. There's two on the shield that look really good. I'm kind of excited to see. Um, but they've they've looked at Brooklyn Nine Nine, The Wire, um, Dragnet. Like it goes really far back. And then particularly they looked at Blue Bloods as being a very very problematic one. And a lot of the problem I think, even when it's unintended. Now Blue Bloods I think is an exception. Because I think Blue Bloods really is just trying to like pass that stuff off like i think it, it feels like a weirdly conservative show and i didn't know a lot about blue bloods until i saw the propaganda video and i do recommend you watch it you will be amazed what your grandparents are watching <laughs> it's you if you wonder why they think the way they think and then watch that video on blue bloods you'll start to understand why your grandparents don't think it's a problem <laughs> anyway that's a different issue um but like a lot of these shows are kind of accidentally that as i said by the nature of storytelling you know whether, whether by design or not um, so the, you have a problem with police shows now because what you want to do is tell people that systemic change is necessary, but systemic change in a TV show that's a running TV show that has to fill 24 or 12 episodes a year of procedural crime stories where the police catch the bad guys because that's literally the format, you're stuck, right? You can't do a lot about it. And I want to, at this point, talk a little bit briefly about The Rookie, which is a show that is currently, I think, kind of suffering in its, um, I think it's third season? God, has it been three years? Is that is the show, is that show in its third season? Yes, it is. So it's five episodes into its third season. And let me tell you, it's, it's approach to Black Lives Matter, um, looking at systemic change in the police, police brutality, racism within the police. It's definitely doing it. And look, it's definitely trying. I, I can't help but give it some credit for bringing some awareness to this stuff. But it's having a real struggle to do it because at the, at the end of the day, the show has to come down to our heroes, who are the police, doing the right thing, being able to help people, right? And that's that's not reality. Now, I always... The Rookie, for me, always kind of got away with it because The Rookie, for me, was always a bit like The West Wing. So if anyone's ever watched The West Wing, it's a show that feels like such fiction, especially these days, where all the politicians are in it for the right reasons. Not all, but like all the the protagonists of the show, they just want to do the right thing. They just want to help people, you know, um, and do the right thing. And it's it's fantasy. It's it's like escapism. It's like I love watching The West Wing because it's so nice to imagine a world where politicians weren't in it for themselves. And I feel like The Rookie is kind of that too for me. Like I watched The Rookie and it's kind of about, for those who don't know, it's actually, it actually doesn't focus on like detectives solving murders every week like a lot of the other procedural cop shows. It's actually about like the, you know, sort of beat cops, you know, the guys on the street patrolling and the sort of uh, situations they get into and while it sometimes veers away from that for some like special episodes that are a bit more exciting maybe have a bit more action on the whole it's it's a lot of like them dealing with the local community and stuff like that and so for that in itself i already kind of loved the rookie because i just thought what an interesting look at the police we never get this look at the police this is an actually on the ground helping communities or trying to and again it's an idealized version of the police that does not reflect reality i want to make that very very clear but i enjoyed it for that reason it was like Oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could make sure everyone that did this job cared? Ah, oh, <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> but it's not that way. So, you know, so it's just, again, it's escapism. Um, 
and I and again I enjoyed I enjoyed it for that, and I have respect that they're trying to address the Black Lives Matter stuff now and the George Floyd of it all and the Breonna Taylor and like all this this situation as it's bubbling up. But they're having real trouble because they still have to maintain a status quo where these police, who are the center of our show, who are people we've come to like and know are good people, they have to still be catching bad guys and doing good because that's the premise. And they're fighting it. And it's and what they've, they introduced a new cop at the start of the third season. And I straight away went, all right, that's our racist cop for the year. Um, and that's what they've done. They've kind of introduced a new character who's, who's you know, who is he, he's representing that other element to the police. And they're, they're, they've got black characters in the show discussing how it's how it's systemic and how they can't speak up. Um, and it's they are tackling it. They're just really struggling. Because the problem is, the way they've done it, by bringing in one character, you're in a world where it's kind of almost accidentally suggesting it's that Bad Apples idea. And I and I don't agree with the whole Bad Apple excuse. Um, I think Chris Rock said it in one of his stand-up bits. Like, you wouldn't accept Bad Apples in pilots. Oh, you know, just a few Bad Apples just crashing planes into mountains. You'd, you'd never fly. It's not accepted. So why is there a system set up that protects these police officers? Even if it's true that it's just a few Bad Apples, which I also don't like for two reasons. Because one, yeah, if they okay, even if it is a few Bad Apples, well, why are they still working there? But the two, I, I think that suggests it's a lot less than it seems to be. You know, uh, if you look at the figures, you look at the amount of uh, incidents that are happening, it's clearly a huge percentage but that's again i'm sorry i'm getting too political here my point being that the rookie is accidentally because it can't change the status quo of what the police is in the show and how the police are perceived in the show because we've already introduced our characters in our world and it is mostly people who are trying to do the right thing we're kind of we're kind of accidentally implying the bad apple thing which, as I've just stated, I don't agree with. So then we come back to Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which uh, the Copaganda video, again, I highly recommend it. Skip Intro's video on Brooklyn Nine-Nine is fascinating because it talks about Mike Sher as a creator and some of the ideas that he pushes in his uh, content. And he particularly talked about, um, which I thought was interesting, that the Brooklyn Nine-Nine has tackled racism and issues of within the police force, systemic stuff. Generally speaking, though, because it's technically a sitcom, they've always gone for a, mile, a sort of small incremental changes, and we'll just have to keep fighting our way up, making small changes until we've changed the world sort of attitude. And that's also accidentally problematic because the reality is, at this point, you just need to pull the rug on that system entirely and rebuild it from scratch, right? You just knock over that Jenga tower, build it again, because <laughs> what we have at present in most of western society i can't speak for every country but certainly here in the uk and certainly in the states the system's broken it's deeply deeply broken and the amount of money that's going into the militarization of the police it's all horribly horribly broken so we're in this situation where brooklyn Nine, which is a comedy which you wouldn't expect to have to deal with like such such big issues has tried to but has accidentally gone down this route of being like when this because a sitcom you need to have a solution within 20 minutes right that's that's the nature of a episode episodic sitcom like in friends when you know Chandler and phoebe fall out because some fixed whatever nonsense you that you have to you round that off within your 20 minutes that's the show that's what those shows do and you can't round off systemic racism or or uh, the issues that are imbibed sort of it, it built into the policing system um in us in 20 minutes um so when you look at the way the show has dealt with it in the past when they have tackled those issues it's always been essentially you know putting a a plaster or a band-aid on a gaping wound it's like oh we did we had this one little victory you know because they, the show still needs to at the end give you a feeling of completion right like nar- narrative s- sort of satisfaction like oh, that story is rounded off and the only way it can do that is by make, giving them some sort of tiny victory and that's again problematic because again it just leads to this idea of oh we'll just make incremental changes and it's evident incremental changes aren't enough um so coming to my point i suppose after god 14 minutes of rambling looking at what brooklyn 99 has the opportunity to do now they scrapped the five episodes they were writing or whatever it was and started from scratch they've now announced that they're going to do 10 episodes and it's going to be their last 10 episodes and it won't be continuing now i've looked into it i can't find evidence that they've necessarily been cancelled and I can't find evidence they've necessarily chosen to end it. It just seems to be ending with a big question mark attached. But let's just assume... 
Well, actually, it doesn't even matter. I, I'm, I was going to say, let's assume the creators have chosen to end it. But I think even if the network has gone, ah, what do we do with this? We can't make this work. Let's stop it. Um, fine. You know, Sentiment with the police. You know, a lot of other shows that got cancelled in the wake of that, like Cops and stuff got cancelled in the wake of in the wake of the, the, the this shift. So, you know, even if it's that, it doesn't really matter to me. Because my point is, if they don't have to maintain a status quo and give us our 20-minute happy ending to the plot of the episode, they have an opportunity to say something really powerful that other cop shows that are trying to maintain their 22-episode seasons and not be, continue to be ongoing so all the people can continue to work don't have the opportunity to do unless they decide to end them the same way, which they won't. Uh, the Rookie, you know, for all... Uh, for all its middling ratings, it, it rates in very specific demographics that that network likes. It's there's a look, there's a reason Castle lasted eight years or whatever it was. You know, um, there's a very particular group you can market to through that show, um, and presumably through the Rookie too. Um, they're looking to keep it going. You know, Brooklyn Nine Nine can really shake things up, suggest the system is broken, not wrap up its storylines, and actually come to a a conclusion that reflects reality which is hey this system is broken imagine a series of brooklyn 99 where some of the lead characters decide to resign because they think the system's broken you can't do that on any other show you know imagine holt getting out of the police and going into politics to try and fix the policing system i could i see a world where we can do that you can't do that last year You've got a show to maintain, your character, the status quo to maintain. You could do so many things now with this show to actually say, this is broken. And I know a lot of people watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine that aren't the sort of people who are deeply engaged with the politics of all this. This could potentially, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a fluffy sitcom the rest of the time. People like it, you know, Nine-Nine, you know, the people like, the people find this show fun. But it could actually hit really hard and do something really powerful. Not necessarily saying it will. We I haven't seen these episodes. You haven't seen these episodes. We don't know what the content of these episodes is going to be. But the fact they're doing those 10 and not just ending it is like, I think there's a real opportunity there. And I kind of trust that Mike Shaw will do it. You look at um, uh, what he did with The Good Place, which is a show that in the end looked at the sort of systemic flaws in an afterlife system you might invent where you're arbitrarily going good people go to heaven bad people go to hell the, the good place analyzed that and said hey that idea is broken you know um what's goodness how do you value goodness you know how do you rate it like what how does that work you know you can't just assign a numerical value to a person and the show broke that system down and rebuilt it so i know sure understands the idea that needs to of what needs to happen here so i genuinely believe the next series of Brooklyn Nine-Nine might be its best. Now, will it? Who knows? Shrug. Um, I, I think there's a really strong chance they're going to do something amazing with these 10 episodes. But, of course, at this point, as I said, we don't know. Um, but I think for those of you who are sad that Brooklyn Nine-Nine might be coming to an end, just know that I actually genuinely think there's a chance Brooklyn Nine-Nine could go out as one of the greatest TV shows of all time if they do something really bold with these 10 episodes. Um whether they will or not remains to be seen. Whether they sort of half it, you know, one foot in, one foot out, still trying to maintain it as a fluffy comedy, but try to make a point towards the end, maybe. I would love for them to go whole hog. Like, the shackles are off. We don't, we're not, we're not trying to stay off the bubble anymore. We're not trying to survive cancellation. Like, just absolutely fuck it. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's speak our minds. I think there's a chance they could do something amazing. So, yeah, that is why I am not disappointed that Brooklyn Nine-Nine has been cancelled. As much as I will miss having the cat, you know, the gang um, in my homes on a sort of weekly basis through the TV season, I, I think there's, yeah, I'm very excited for what they might do. So, keep your eyes out for those 10 episodes. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep my eye on, you know, if there's any updates in terms of, like, the cast doing... Uh, if the cast are doing like um, interviews and stuff, if there's anything that indicates we're going this way, maybe I'll do another one of these sort of covering that. But yeah, I've talked long enough. Um, but thank you very much for listening. I hope that was of interest to people. And I do reckon, I genuinely please go subscribe to Skip Intro and watch the, the really 
intricate, well-edited, well-written pieces that really break this stuff down. I've kind of given you a, like a summary of some of the stuff I've learned watching that as well as some of my own thoughts and what it might mean for Brooklyn Nine-Nine going forward. But those videos are really, really good. Um, I'm very much looking forward to watching the last two, so please do go subscribe. Um, and obviously, if you get a chance, subscribe here too if you want to hear more about this, um, some of the upcoming topics I'm going to be looking at. Um, I want to talk about the Snyder Cut. I'm kind of looking at talking about uh, uh, Apple TV potentially being worth your time suddenly. Uh, not suddenly. I think it's secretly been worth your time. Apple are just bad at marketing it. We'll come to it. But yeah, thanks very much for listening. And in the meantime, and I will see you tomorrow.